Betfred, proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship. I'm delighted to welcome four-time World Snooker Champion John Higgins. John, there's only one place to start. I mean, what we're going through right now as a country, well, as a world, it's just, it's grim. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's happening. How are you doing, Mark? It's, uh, yeah, I mean, we've never seen times like, well, obviously, no, none of us have ever seen times like this. And the most important thing is, obviously, just being with your, with your family at this time. That's, that's the only thing you can think about. It's, uh, it's a tough, tough time we're all going through. How are you coping with it, with your family, John? Ah, it's it's been it's been it's been tough, obviously, but it's been it's been good in a way as well because my my kids are getting a little bit older, teenagers, and sometimes when you're away at tournaments and you're coming back and these are like passing ships in the night, they've got their beginning to have their own lives as well. But in a way, it's been good that we're we're playing all different games together, we're having dinner together, and we're out in the garden together. We're, the daughter's trying to show me some things on the trampoline. <laughs> I've pulled a couple of muscles already, but it's, uh, it's it's been good spending time with the family. It's been, but it's also been tough also because you're not seeing your uh, your mum and, and your in laws and different things because because they're obviously self isolating as well. And the only time you'll get to see them is on things like this FaceTime, Zoom, and and when you go and drop off uh, the messages to them and different things. So the messages, which is a Scottish term of some some bread and milk and different things if, if people don't know what that is but uh yeah it's it's tough it's tough Matt. i'm sure we're all going through the same thing but uh the nhs have they've been unbelievable so far haven't they it's incredible uh what the nhs is doing in the united kingdom is just phenomenal john they're the real heroes when you look at it Mark, I know people might look at sports stars and different things and put them up on different pedestals. I think every every walk, every day in any walk of life, are looking at all these NHS workers and helpers and putting them up in the pedestal because they're they're, 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 they're the real heroes out there just now. Everybody looks at them you now just in awe and just what they're doing and what they're putting themselves through and the risks they're putting to their families. But I wish we could only do the same. You still see pictures and online and different things, all these gatherings when the weather's decent and it's unbelievable how there's still people out there not 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 using the guidelines that the NHS and the government's telling you to do just to stay in and stay safe and that'll be helping the backlog of patients. It's it's incredible how, how stupid some people can be at this testing time. Because at the end of the day, the NHS staff are risking their lives. It's the least we can do, isn't it, is stay in. Exactly. How hard can that be now us to stay in and hopefully knowing you're going to be safe? Whereas they've got to go out and, and do their 12, 14 hour shifts every day. And oh, I don't know, it's, it's heartbreaking, but in a way, yeah, they, they're, they're the real heroes without a shadow of a doubt. There's an image behind me of happier times. I've got the crucible behind me because uh, now I'm normally preparing for the World Championship. Of course, you'd normally be preparing for the World Championship. Yeah, no, it's, it's. I just wish we could ever get back to those times again, Mark. It's that looks a, a sight we'll not see for a, for a while like that. But you can live in hope. Uh, now, God, I was thinking about it. Uh, Twenty seven years, I think, I've been getting myself ready roughly about this time to get down and, and play at the Crystal. I've not missed a year in that amount of time, more than half my life. And yeah, not to be doing that, it's it's heartbreaking. But in a way, obviously, we know there's there's more important things out there just now going on. So, uh, but no, one day hopefully we'll be back there competing again and uh, doing what we, we can hopefully do best down there. I'm sure World Snooker and Barry Hearn will do the right thing and we'll play the tournament when they get the government advice and when it's safe to have a tournament on. Yeah, I've I, I seen the press release, obviously, from, from Barry Hearn. God, we were all really worried about him as well. We, we, we need like a, a woke up to the news. So I just hope he, he's getting well and, and he's he's relaxing because we, I think we all know that he's he's like a workaholic. So maybe this has gave him a little bit of a fright as well. So there's more important things in the world than than doing doing your deals and doing your things is is, is being safe and being being healthy. So I seen his. 
his uh, press release saying it could be maybe the end of July, start of August. Listen, who knows how long's a piece of string? But as you say, the main thing is if he's safe, if he's healthy, and and then if it does come around that we can hopefully get back there and play in any way, shape, or form. There might not be any crowds here, but if, if we can get back to a little bit of normality and the tournament's on, obviously with yourselves at Betfred, and it would be amazing if we could get down there and play again. But obviously, everybody's got to stay safe and healthy first and foremost. That's uh, that's uh, the biggest the biggest voice, I'm sure. Uh, I know you've got a, a table at home. Have you been practicing at all, John? Not at all. No, no. It's uh, as I said, we've been out in the garden and playing board games and doing jigsaws and been doing all sorts really but that's the only thing I've not been doing is, is uh, practicing because I, I think it's pretty hard that obviously when you know you've, you've not got any tournaments in sight obviously possibly to maybe the start of August uh, that gives us what about another three or four months you don't really want to burn yourself out if, if there is going to be tournaments then so I'm sure the closer we get to those dates There'll, there'll be more directions from the government, from our snooker body, and telling us what might be happening. And then, obviously, that might be the time to get the queue out. But uh, no, I've not, I've not been practicing much at all, Mark. But you've had a, you've had a, a pretty, uh, pretty good haircut there. Who did that for you? <laughs> yeah, Moldest, Moldest did it. Uh, obviously, it was getting out of control. So it was obviously you've not, not been able to go to any hairdressers or any barbers. And, I'm always getting slagged off that it's about time I got I done something like this because I was just trying to hold on to what little hair I had left. But uh, the wife doesn't really like it this short, so my boy done it, my oldest boy done it, uh, and it's that's it's nice and easy, isn't it? You get up, you jump into the shower, you you don't need to put any, I don't think you need to put any what is it head and shoulders on. But uh, but no, it's funny. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good. It's it's fine, and obviously, as I said, if I get back. To play in snooker at the Christmas game, I'm sure the wife will like it to be a little bit, a little bit longer. Obviously, we're thinking about the people who've lost loved ones. You know, it's not they're not just a number; it's, it's it's tragic what's going on. But let's look back at happier times, John. We've got the shot of the crucible behind me. What is it about that that theatre that just makes the World Championship so special? Oh, I don't know. I just think it's obviously. The, culmination of a year of hard graft and when you get there you know it's the last tournament you're, you're putting everything into it I know I've done that many times over the years and and it's just blood sweat and tears that's all that's all that that Chris will remind you of because it's a it's a special place special place special place best place ever to play your snooker it can be the worst place also because there's been many times I've played there and I've been just want to the ground to open up and swallow me up. But obviously when you're out there and you're competing against the best players and especially around about those that final night, whenever I've been lucky enough, eight times I've been there for the final night. There's been good times, there's been bad times, but I think at the end of your career you always look back and you know, just that that the the best night well I've ever had as a snooker professional and it's uh, it's some place, some place. Well, let's start with one of the good times, 1998, when you won your first World Championship. And you were only 22 years of age, and you, you were fabulous that tournament. 14 centuries as well, that tournament, which was a record back then. Yeah, that was, that was an unbelievable tournament for me. That was my the first time winning it, uh, playing Ken in the final. Great match. Ken was going for back-to-back. He was trying to break the Chris Wilkers. And... Yeah, I, I, I can just remember having an overnight lead, not really sleeping great at all, because obviously you knew Ken was going to come back at you, and so he did. I was 10-6 in front. At the end of the third session, he pulled it back to 13-11. Uh, but then in the night session, I think I played I played pretty well, and I, I just I managed to get a little bit more of a lead on him, and then I, I managed to close it out. So, uh, yeah. As I say, I've always said it's the, the first one you do anything. It's it must be one of the best feelings. It's it's what you've always dreamed of, isn't it? And uh, to do it there again, someone like Ken, it was yeah, an unbelievable night. Growing up as a young lad in Scotland, playing 
Was it the dream to play at the Crucible and then to win the World Championship? Put that into words. How do you, how do you feel on a Tuesday morning when you wake up the next day knowing you've not just won a snooker tournament at the Crucible, you are world champion? I think now, when you think about it, I think back then you think it, it would happen again and again and again. That's what I was maybe thinking and it maybe didn't mean as much as when I was sitting talking to you right now about it. I'm just looking over above me. It's the picture of when, when I did win it. Uh, yeah, it's incredible. It, it really is in, incredible that, that all the years and all the hours and you put the hard graft in and then it, it comes down to that final night and then for you to be standing in there with the trophy. I always remembered all the other great champions lifting it and when they lifted it up, they always seen the like the, the little bulbs and the little bright lights that they were lifting the, the trophy up to. And then I can just remember looking up and seeing the, seeing the same bulbs that people like Steve Davis and Alex Higgins and Stephen Hendry have, have lifted up as well. And then for you to be one of them, uh, yeah, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to describe. It really is. Well, when you won it in 98, you became world number one and you knocked Stephen Hendry off his perch. He'd been world number one for what? Eight years. Yeah, that was another. That was another. Obviously, massive bonus to to do that. It, obviously, playing with Stephen over the years, he was he was one of the main reasons why I was probably standing there because I, I practiced with Stephen for a couple of years solid, and now uh, that was invaluable practicing with someone as good as Stephen. So, yeah, to not come off, I don't maybe know if he enjoyed it that much, but uh, <laughs> it was it was a special feeling to be world champion and world number one as well. Uh, your next final was three years uh, later in 2001. You, you hit a, an inform Ronnie O'Sullivan, didn't you, in that final? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, really, that was Ronnie's first title. And what, what I can only remember of that is, is I think I finished a late semi-final. I think I, I, think I beat Matthew, Matthew Stevens, 17-15, 17-16, one of them. And I can remember only sleeping about two or three hours because obviously the adrenaline's still going, you're pumped up. And then you're waking on up the next morning and before you know it, you're thrust back into the, the one table set up again. And before I knew it, I was, I was losing 6-2 to Ronnie and I could never ever get back on level peg. And I was getting a couple of frames closer to him and then he would put the foot down and then drive away from me again. And then, yeah, he, he ran out of deserved, I think it was 18-14 winner against me. And obviously he's went on to do, obviously we all know unbelievable things in the game. But, uh it's, it's, it's just such a draining tournament, such a draining tournament because I've, I've been on the other side as well where I've, I've been through at the final and I've been keeping an eye on the late semi-final finish. I think I think one of them was, was I think it would have been then went on to the 2009, I think, final when I was playing Sean Murphy in the final and I was tucked up uh, reading a book, I think it was, and I was keeping an eye on the scores. And I think he went 17-16, I think it was, with Mark Selby. And I knew roughly if I could go in the next day and maybe get in control a little bit because it's, it's, it's such a long slog to do it now, time and time again, come back and then go again the following day when, when you've had such a high. Uh, and that's just what happened, I think. And, and he, the, same, the final with Ronnie and then I could... I, took, I used that experience, I think, when I went into the final with Sean and different things. So you're always, you're always trying to use your experience a little bit now along, along the way. The second title came in 2007, beating uh, Mark Selby. Yeah, yeah. No, I can remember Mark. That was just the, the beginning of Mark being, being obviously one of, the, one of the greats of the game. Uh, overnight, I think I was leading Mark 12-4, I think it would have been. And I was thinking that you're, 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 you're more than halfway there. But same, we all know how great Mark is at coming back at you. And then he, he came back the following session. On the third session, he came, I think he won six frames in a row to come back to 12-10. And I was lucky that they, we stopped a couple of frames early because it was, it was going to, I think it was going to overrun into the, the fourth and final session. So that, that was good for me to go away and get an hour break. And, have a bite to eat and try and relax again and then come back and then uh, I think I think I played pretty well at night against Mark I know I think we got to one point he was only one frame behind 14-13 but then I, I think I played pretty well the, the, the last four frames to, to pull away and 
yeah, it was a great achievement. Now winning, winning the second, second one. I thought it would, have, I thought it would have came maybe a little bit earlier than what it did, but I think yeah. it made me appreciate it more because it was, it was, it was so long than coming to, to get the second one. Because I, I don't think what people realise, John. Obviously, look, it's a game of skill. You're a sportsman at the end of the day, but the crucible is like this ultimate test. It's like the, you know, the Tour de France, isn't it? It's the ultimate test of stamina. But obviously, real mental strength as well, because you mentioned it can be hard to sleep, can't it? And the crowd are right on top of you as well. You've got to be so strong mentally at the crucible. Yeah, without a doubt, Matt. And I think, I think if you ask any any champion that, that that's won it, I think it doesn't really hit them the following day. I think it's maybe three or four days later where where you might go to sleep, I and mean, it might be about thirteen or fourteen hours before you wake up again. Because I think you're just on autopilot. And I think you're, you, it's as if you're holding your breath and then whenever it finishes, then you can just let out a big sigh. I think that's what, what really happens at the Crucible. I think it's only really, as you say, two or three days later, then I think you just go and then mental shutdown. Like that, that's what it really does to you, that tournament. It, it takes everything out of you if you can get to like the final weekend. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's a marathon, but it's, it's as I say, it's, a, it's the best feeling in the world if you can come out winning. And um, the third title came in 2009 against Sean Murphy as well. And you, you were you were banging for that year, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, it was one of the, the ones as well. I think I, I think it's all, you, you're, you're always striving to have a lead after the first day because, you, as I said, I'd, I'd been in both sides. I'd been, I'd been losing against Ronnie and it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to sleep. But then it's, it's probably harder to sleep when you're in front, because all you're doing is you're going to be thinking of the other guy coming back at you. Uh, but again, Sean, yeah, I, I think I played very well that, that year. I think that my safety was pretty good. And, and I don't think Sean's long game, I think, if I can remember right, it, like as now, I was leaving a lot of long shots and he, he was just missing them. And I think I, I built a lead, I think, about 11-5 the, the first session. And then I think I was, I think it was 16-8, but up going into the, the fourth session and really something a bit like Judd against me last year it's you, you're, you're really you're really out there there's, there's not much hope left for you then uh, and I think I won I think it was 18-9 against Sean so but no just as I said any any win you get especially at Chris Holt, it's an unbelievable feeling against an unbelievable player Sean Murphy The fourth one came in 2011 against Judd Trump who of course you played last year when you and Judd walked out for that final session on the Monday night. The crucible was just electric. I don't think it was just amazing. What was it like walking out that night? I've still never forgot it. I really haven't. It's still, it's still, yeah, it gives me the goosebumps just, just now thinking about it. And I think that was probably all down to, down to Judd's emergence coming onto the game. I think he, he had the whole, the whole, the Holy Britain maybe with him that, that followed Snooker and they were wanting to see someone like Judd come through like a breath of fresh air and he, he so nearly got there really uh, it was it was a really tough game uh, as I said during the match Judd was, was putting on some unbelievable balls which he which he can still do to this day but he's obviously aligned up with, with greater tactical play now which is incredible but maybe back then he just maybe he maybe went for maybe a shot too much, who knows? And maybe that was the reason why I, I managed to, to get my head over the line. But yeah, it was looking at one point going to be 17, 16, and I needed a snooker and I managed to get it. And then I can remember him doubling a pink and then putting the final black. And then yeah, it was yeah, it was incredible, an incredible feeling to, to win it again. And it was a real emotional win as well, wasn't it? Because of your family circumstances. Yeah, obviously I'd lost my dad eh, six months earlier, so yeah, it was it was tough. It really was tough. And as I say, you're in a bubble. You're you're just trying to not think anything. You're trying to just get yourself through it. And then, as I said, I think it was maybe about three or four days after that 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 probably hit me the hardest after that tournament. It was, it was tough, but as uh, as I said, it was it was an unbelievable thing to do as well. Four world titles, but then the last three years, you have got to the final, lost to Mark Selby in 2017, lost to Mark Williams in 2018, Judd Trump, which we'll talk about that final in a moment. 
look, I know you're a born winner and you want to win, but do you do you take heart from you know reaching the last three finals? Yeah, I've, I've got to. Yeah, I've, I've got to take heart. I can't be sitting here and say. Uh, Obviously, you think, oh, I'm a winner, I'm a winner of this. I, I hate it every minute of it. As I say, if you can get yourself to that final two days at the Crucible, you're doing something right. There's only one other guy that has done as good as you. And as I said, I've just come up against the unbelievable champions. and Selby, Matt Selby, Matt Williams and Judd. It's, uh, I've tried my hardest. I think against Matt Selby, that was probably the... The one out of the three, really, I maybe look back on it and think you, you maybe let it slip a little bit. I was well in front against Mark again, but he, he had he had the belief in himself that he, he felt probably that he could come back. I, I, know, I know he'd done it against Ronnie, I think, the previous year or, or two, and he probably had the belief that he could do it again, and, and, and he did, and he came back and be really strong. And, and I broke before him, but then against Mark and against Judd, I think, I think the best player would uh, really do that. that Mark, Played, Matt Williams played unbelievable stuff against me and I was just hanging on to him and I was proud of the way I, I hung on and, 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 and I made it pretty close and pretty respectable yep. because if you look at him throughout the whole tournament he was he was by far I think the player of the tournament and then against Judd yeah he just blew me away <laughs> it's simple simple as that much you can really say just uh, it's, it's been it's been played a little bit on Eurosport and it's tough to watch sometimes but I sit down and watch some of the frames and and you just shake your head, that you shake shake your head, that just how incredible he, some of the, some of the frames he was. He he was superb in that final, wasn't he, Judd? I mean, he put on a hell of a display. He, he clearly learned a lot in the eight years since you'd beaten him in twenty eleven. Yeah, he's, he's he's learned he's learned a lot as a player, without a shadow of a doubt. He's he's still got the unbelievable any shots he can do and his Q power but he's such, he's such a tough player to play against now he's got the all round package as I said maybe he didn't have that in 2011 but he's went away and worked and worked and worked and yeah every credit to him every credit to him he looks as if now he's he is, he is the man to beat now if we ever make it make it back to the crucible he is he's the one we've all got to try and aim for and last year you were involved in one of the most incredible semi-finals we've ever seen at the Crucible against Dave Gilbert, the 17-16. You looked down and out, it was a clearance of 139, then you won it with a break of 55. I mean, you were just emotionally drained after that semi-final, were you? It's not sunk in, has it? No, no. We're, we're in yeah. Can you try and put that last frame into words? No. Oh, I'm absolutely drained, absolutely drained. I feel so sorry for Dave as well because I, I, I've seen how, how upset, how emotional I was at the end. And listen, that's just what this sport does. Even I'm crying, but I'm the winner. But it's that's what it does to you. Ah, it was it was it was, heart, it was heartbreaking for Dave. I, I mean, I think I said to him after. I didn't mean it any disrespect. That, that I think I brought him down to my my level the first three sessions. He he was a better player than me throughout that game. And I, I was really struggling with my game, really struggling. But I just managed to stay in touch with them. And then on the final session, I did manage to pull out a good bit of form. Uh, and Dave played well as well, but he, he, he'd done an, an unfortunate kick. I think he was in about the balls. At, at, I think it was 16, 16 all. And I managed to get in and do a break, and then it was to and throwing on the colours back and forth, and then I managed to pot the crucial. I think it was the final yellow and green. Uh, yeah, and it was tough. It was tough for him to take. Obviously, you, you've seen the scenes and that for him after, but that that's just what the, the crucible does. I'm sure he will be back. I'm sure he will be back. To hopefully maybe one day be back there again, or even to win it because he's such a great player. But that's that's what the the crucible can do. It can just it can just it can just break you, and I think it, it broke Dave at the end. And I managed to just scramble my way over the line, but it was yeah, it was another one of the games. It was a pleasure to be involved in. Yeah. Is it fair to say that that semi-final reflected your character, not giving up, scrapping, up for a war? <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah, I've I've never been known to be the most flamboyant. You know, all the players are the most attacking or whatever. But that, that's maybe that's maybe what's brought me by over the years is. Is maybe not giving up. 
maybe as easy as some and put my heart and soul into it most of the time and, and yeah and if you've got to beat me you fair play you'll shake your hand and wish you good luck if you beat me but it's maybe I'm, I'm pretty tough to maybe beat maybe at the Crucible who knows maybe that's the reason uh, I think the, the Crucible does something to you doesn't it John? You know, you, you'd love to think so. I mean, uh, I mean, someone someone mentioned to me uh, if, if you could win it again anytime soon. Obviously, it would have to be maybe soon the next year or two. Or who knows? It'd be the, the fourth decade that, that would have won a world title. And now you, it's incredible when you think about the the nineties, the noughties, the the tens, and then obviously you'd love to do it in the twenties. It would be an incredible achievement. But obviously, time was running out for the likes of myself to, to try and do it but it won't be for the want to try and obviously I'll still be trying my hardest and as I say who knows what's going to happen who knows when I'll be back there playing we just don't know obviously what, what, what's happening in the world right now but yeah I'd dearly love to be walking right down where, where you're sitting right now that'd be incredible so it would matter now right down you'd love to be walking down there one day to be playing there again it'd be special really special so you, you've said obviously we don't know what's going on but you know Fingers crossed. Our thoughts, obviously, with everyone who's lost someone and everyone who is struggling in this crisis. But John Higgins, four-time world champion, as we sit here right now, is going nowhere. Is that correct? Yeah, that's 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 exactly right. I, I won't be going anywhere. I, I'll hopefully still be there for a couple of more years yet, putting my heart and soul into it. Hopefully, maybe giving the fans a little bit of enjoyment when it comes back. If they do come back to watch it at Crystal sometime, I'd dearly love to be there when they come back as well. Well, John, thank you ever so much for your time. Mate, you stay safe, Mark. All the best. Betfred, proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship.